Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are in the process of breaking down Voice Players 2022 releases, which I haven't gotten to yet, and I'm super excited to be doing so because they've released hit after hit this year, and I can't wait to go through each of them, do my own, my cute little musical analysis of what's going on with these arrangements of vocal performances, and yeah, um, I am in it for the analysis, as I said, so I will be pausing a lot. If that's not your game, go watch another video. Or just go watch the music video itself, because it's worth it. Today we're looking at The Dragonborn Comes, the Skyrim theme, as performed a cappella by voice play. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is Jeff's arrangement that we're starting with, obviously, super low A flat to D flat, one, and subharmonics. Extended very long, he holds that for a very long time, and it's very awesome that he's able to do that. And one thing I appreciate right off the bat with this arrangement is the fact that it's not afraid to take its time to start very slow when it comes to building momentum. My favorite topic, as you guys know, if you've been here for a while. Um, so just opening with a solo voice, doing something really cool, but not overstated, is really important to the development of this piece as it goes on. So let's continue. <laughs> soft hums all understated our hero our hero who claims a warrior's heart. now i mean with jeff singing that low that's down to our hero that's a flat to d flat a flat one to d flat two um you gotta have a little bit of grit to hit those a flats with power in chest voice and I think he does it well while maintaining a softer tone, if you will, to kind of sugarcoat the opening of this piece to present something a little bit more soft before we build. So I think that's props to Jeff for being able to do that with with pretty good posture. I tell you, I tell you, the dragonborn comes. With the voice wielding power of the ancient Nordons. Believe, believe the dragon born Now I've said it unabashedly before, Cesar is my favorite member of voice play. I think his voice is absolutely beautiful. And the softer, like low baritone. Not necessarily. The softer, like, baritone tone he gets here complements Jeff's dungeon rattling bass so incredibly well. And the two of them harmonizing together in a piece like this is a very wise arrangement decision. It's an end to the evil of all Skyrim's foes. So now that we're building more momentum, we can allow for Omar, our featured soloist here, to come in with his brighter, like breathier, upper register tone. All of all Skyrim's foes. Beware, beware the dragonborn. So at this point, all of our vocalists stop with the hums and take the text, which is emblematic of how we're opening up the piece as we go on. Beware, beware the dragonborn come the dragon come For the darkness has passed and the legend yet grows. I'll be honest, I find this kind of comical. I love Ellie's upper metal like metal belting voice. I th I find it kind of funny how it it kind of sticks out a little bit in this arrangement. Especially in this softer beginning that we have. It's not bad by any means. It's just the most unique voice we we have in the set in terms of tone. Has passed and the 
yet grows You'll know, you'll know the dragonborns come Now I especially like this part Maybe I'll try to pick up the pace a little bit, but we have... Excuse me. They all say on this major chord on you know, the first you know. Right here. And then it deviates a little bit as Jeff goes up to the, that, um, the dominant. Very cool. The dragonborns This part makes me so excited because instead of humming, we have uhs, low uh, or ah, uh, kind of, it's, it's a little bit lower, it's like an ah uh sound. And again, this is representing opening up the piece a little bit. And what we kind of have melodically is everybody is singing essentially the same thing, but at different times. So it's kind of like a round effect. That's what the musical term for that would be. And... It sounds so nice with everybody's voices blending together, and you you'll see how it crescendos. It keeps building as the syllables open up. So let's let's get through that. <laughs> So when Ellie comes in, he's up there in the tenor range. That's above tenor high C. It's E flat, D flat five. Um, and he has definitely a very head dominant mix going on here as he goes up there. But I feel like this is definitely a a moment where that middle voice can really shine. Now that's also really cool. We have a bit of polyrhythm rhythm section there where LA is up to that E5 that descends in. So you can count that one, two, one, two, one, two. Meanwhile, Jeff and whoever else, it might just be Jeff. Let me find out. So Ellie's doing that in that two rhythm, those three sets of two, or those three notes with two subdivisions each, while Jeff is doing dum 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 da dum dum da 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 da, something like that, where it's two sets of three, so that contrast in rhythm makes it sound like they're almost singing in different time signatures. They're not, it's still like a, a triple meter six eight, but the fact that Je um, Jeff is singing in that triplet feel and Ellie singing in more of a duplet feel creates a lot of contrast that keeps, again, this momentum building. I'll tell you right off the bat that my favorite thing about their cover of the Skyrim theme is kind of this ethereal sense to it because I would find myself listening to this in the car and I would just get sucked away into this medieval world. Now mind you, I'd still be paying attention to the road, but I think their ability to do that with songs like this, to create this atmosphere that you're able to just get lost in with sounds only made using the human voice is a feat that I just can't describe how awesome that is to hear taking taking effect in in, in the modern music industry. 
And I think this arrangement is emblematic of that. Like, just this environment of medieval or, like, warriors going to battle kind of feel that we have here. It's just so immersive, and I can't get over it. So the second we don't have very much movement until we get the, huh, like, the, the shouts... It's just kind of them chilling in this dum, 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 like the canon in D. Just kidding, that's not what it is. But, so we're just kind of sitting here in the stasis as we're waiting for it to slowly build. And Jeff's, like I said in the beginning, is not afraid to take his time with this build, which I think is part of the impact of this piece. So let's continue through here. Awesome metal moment there, and they're singing. I forget the, what the language is called. Uh, don't hate on me for that. But they're singing in this language that was created for the Skyrim video game, and the the diction that they possess is so like so spot on and so sharp. Especially when Ellie adds that upper harmony to what Omar Omar excuse me Omar is singing. <laughs> And listen to these offbeat backgrounds. So you have the 6-8 pattern, 1, 2, 3, 1, and the backgrounds are going da, 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 da. They're landing on the 2 and the 5 of each of each um pattern of 6. So this kind of offbeat pattern we have isn't just like a little a little arrangement tactic to keep things more interesting and fresh. <laughs> So this interlude section, we start on lower syllables and softer singing tone. And as we build, like as we get to that halfway point, we open to more of like, ah, oh, syllables. And these dissonances and resolutions kind of expand outward towards a ultimate resolution that our brain likes to think we're going to hear very soon. So that's like, dissonance is a really big part of arranging or composing. Because you you want it to build to somewhere, and th you do that by creating dissonances that we want resolved, that the human brain like strives to hear resolved. So this opening up of dissonances and these clashes, as like Jeff takes the bass line up and the vocals keep like swimming around in their respective ranges, it's just such a cool pattern that creates such an awesome build. Another high D flat from Ellie. Uh, st it's still a pretty head dominant mix, but that's okay because like that, that's pretty high for a male. So there's another high E coming up. And another facet that keeps the interest and motivation to hear this out going is that arpeggio Jeff does the doom, 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 doom. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna pretend to be able to do that neatly at all. But those arpeggios he keeps going instead of the bass drones add another layer of wow this is really interesting. Now, let's see if the video gives any hint as to what's going on with the voices here. Because obviously we have Ellie back up on the E. And 
doing the same thing I talked about earlier with those patterns of two. Um, and then we have Jeff doing the. I think Cesar might be doing a like a baritone bass harmony there. Um, it also has an Ellie in an octave, and I think that might be Omar doing the lower octave then. The video is sometimes deceptive because they use a lot of multi-tracking in arrangements sometimes. So I can't exactly tell who's doing what there. Um, but yeah, it looks like Ellie and Omar are doubling that octave there. And Jeff and Cesar are doing like a, a duo, like low background harmony. And they do have that same polyrhythm going on with the two and the three clashing a little bit. The other thing I wanted to comment on is, as we build to that huge impact, um, that high E there, we cut out the drum to kind of like tell you that like, the way I see it is kind of like a plane having a little bit of turbulence and then it just like smooths out. I don't know why that's the image my mind creates for that, but um, that kind of smoothing out in the flight pattern, it gives us a second to be like, to just breathe and take it in a little bit before we get the dr drums back in. And this vocal percussion for Lane is really driving the whole piece. We can't, we can't overlook Lane. Very nice work from Lane. This is full vocal power from everybody. Let's let's finish this out. Let's build. This is the this is the apex of the song. We've been building all the way to this point. Now we're gonna sell it. Everybody is selling it here. Now you can hear, after I had my crazy moment, it kind of fades off a little bit, even with Ellie up there. He keeps hitting those high E's in this one. Uh, very impressive work. But yeah, even when he's up there, you can kind of hear the piece fading out. Now that we've hit our apex, there's nowhere to go but down if we want to have common sense when it comes to musical arrangement. So we get kind of a winding down feel here. So let's listen through this. Our hero, our hero who claims a war. And there we get we get a little bit of lane vocal moment. It's not much, but he's leading those excuse me, he's leading those arpeggio tones there. I tell you, I tell you the dragon born calm. You can hear it's a lot easier to work with five voices instead of just four, especially since you have lane as kind of like that middle lower voice. Um But yeah, and we also have Jeff like doing the solo again that he did in the beginning. Um, and you can kind of hear in his voice the idea of winding down, which is probably more to your ear adjusting from what you just heard back to this lower setting. But still, the arrangement itself with the, um, the more settled arpeggios than we had in the beginning is kind of adding to this effect as well. Just ending we could possibly get just that one voice and Mar the soloist.
something I don't know. I'm having trouble finding the um, the intervals there, but the entire piece is such a perfect example of how to build a piece and then let it wind down. That's kind of the main theme I was going for throughout the entire analysis I was doing. And it's I, I, I always say that momentum is exactly what we're looking for in a piece. Momentum, yes. And once you hit that impact, there always needs to be a point of winding down. Usually it's a lot shorter like we hear in this one. But um, yeah, this arrangement is such a masterpiece. Like I said, it's one that absolutely takes me away to the world that they are portraying. I haven't played the Skyrim games, unfortunately, though the reason this one struck me so much when it was first released is that my middle school band director told me that Skyrim had the best video game soundtrack. I didn't believe him because I was in the Mario Galaxy phase. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, and make sure you go like and subscribe to your voice plays channel, their original video. That's all I have for you, so I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.